When we first encounter Erwin, his motion isn't very exciting. When we hit the play button, he doesn't do anything at all. Looking at the sliders on the left, we realize that we have instructed Erwin to have zero velocity in both the horizontal and vertical directions. No wonder he won't move. Let's adjust the sliders to a different profile. Let's ask Erwin to execute motion in the horizontal direction with a constant velocity, but still no velocity in the vertical direction. We should see Erwin move rightward as a result. At each second of his motion, Erwin leaves behind a ghost image of himself. This series of ghosts produces a motion map. The motion map is one way we think about motion. Because the ghosts are evenly spaced, we know Erwin wasn't speeding up or slowing down over most of his motion. In fact, because we know his speed is 2 meters per second, we can see how far 2 meters is in the map. Let's look at the velocity graph on the left. At the start, Erwin has a velocity of 0. But by 1 second, his velocity is 2 meters per second. Continuing at that speed, he'll move 2 meters every second. We can control Erwin's horizontal and vertical motion separately. Let's try having Erwin walk rightward at a constant speed. But move downward at increasing speed. Now, Erwin executes a complicated path through space. But if we look carefully, we can see that horizontally, the motion map images are separated by the same horizontal distance each time. Vertically, the motion map images are growing farther and farther apart. This is in fact kind of what the trajectory of a thrown object looks like. It moves horizontally at fixed speed and accelerates downward toward the ground. The resulting shape is parabolic. In this case, we can see that the velocity in the vertical direction changed by negative 10 meters per second over 6 seconds. This means the acceleration in the vertical direction was negative 10 over 6, which equals negative 1.7 meters per second, or meters per second squared. We live in three dimensions, which means if we had a more ambitious simulation, we could add a third slider that controls the position of Erwin above the ground. Ordinary motion in our universe is a combination of independent motion in three perpendicular directions. So play around, try different combinations, and see what types of paths you can create in two dimensions.